One other thing I'll ever mention is the Criminal Code of Canada. Ironically, these were law enforcement uh, personnel that were involved with a situation where there could be the Criminal Code of Canada to deal with concerning um, operation of aircraft in a dangerous manner. Now, if you were involved in an incident like this and the TSB decided that you were negligent and that you were indeed operating an aircraft in an unsafe manner and you caused a collision with an aircraft or could have caused a collision of aircraft and endangered lives, uh, you could be subject to jail penalties for that and huge fines. So it's a huge responsibility uh, of that. We cannot live in a world where people just start operating aircraft unsafely, unprofessionally, uh, whatever excuse, I was task saturated, I wasn't trained, right? I, I never knew how serious this was. The aircraft acted in an unpredictable manner or whatever else, right? Pilots are operating aircraft. They must do it in a safe manner, uh, according to the Criminal Code of Canada. So again, the observations and the take back from this, if you think this could not happen to you, think again, please. I can guarantee you that that police officer never, ever thought that something like that would happen when he was flying a drone doing a surveillance operation. There was situational awareness lacking big time in this situation. I don't believe that the, the pilot flying knew he was flying right on the approach path of an aircraft. Had he done investigation in the Canadian Flight Supplement, or even on the VTA, he might have had the information he needed to avoid that collision. The task saturation was a huge causation, as we read. Again, you cannot do it all. People want to do it all these days. Maybe to save money, maybe to streamline their business, right? Hiring an in-house drone operation instead of contracting it out to a qualified person that really knows what they're doing and has experience that can focus on keeping the aircraft straight. That's the priority, not savings, not street linings things. We have the failure of the VO, the visual observer. Overconfidence, right? I can do this, right? I'm safe. I don't need geofencing. I don't need to report my flight even. Everything will work out fine. Nobody will know. Uh, too much reliance on fail safe and autonomy, right? The drone will, if I get lost, the drone will come home automatically. Um, if there's some danger, the drone will automatically be able to save me from it. That's just not reality. Um, Fail-safe features on a drone will not prevent you from a collision with an aircraft, especially those uh, that are not equipped with the, uh, the telemetry data, as we stated. This could have been much worse. And as we saw with the drone impact study, um, even with a small Phantom, um, the damage it could cause to an aircraft is just shocking. Um, and that one in the study was just a Phantom. It wasn't an M300 or a Matrice aircraft, which is much heavier and much more bulky with much more powerful batteries on it too. Had it hit the windscreen, it could have taken out the pilot flying. I would note that uh, had it caused, had that very aircraft hit the uh, structure of the aircraft it could have caused the aircraft to go out of control and crashed over a built-up area. I think the impact and the kinetic energy could have taken out the vertical or horizontal stabilizer. Because uh, if you look on a Cessna, how fragile they are because the aircraft is built so lightly, that it would have just, I believe, it would have shedded one of those off. And if that happened, the aircraft could have gone out of control uh, absolutely without any problem. And then, of course, it could have embedded into the aircraft and caught fire with a light bulb battery, uh, which would have been compromised or damaged in that scenario as well. Um, I wish the Dakota University did the test with a live battery and with the aircraft on. The test that they did seemed to have it off at the time. Uh, but they should put it on with a fully charged LiPo battery and then do that to it and then observe what happens to the LiPo battery. Uh, when it is compromised and damaged in a kinetic uh, collision like that. So conclusions, take drone in flight extremely seriously. Um, it's not 
some type of a toy. We all know that the DJI Mavic Mini is trying to skirt the rules and stay under 300 grams so that anybody can fly and go around like that. And I think it's just a matter of time before we start to see impacts of those things and what could happen when they collide with aircraft. Um, I would argue that advanced drone piloting is really a specialized skill and a new study. It's not some sideline. Um, I think it, we must treat it as a specialized skill. It is new technology. It is rapidly evolving technology, which is getting more and more powerful by the day. Uh, and it's becoming more complex with more features, more things that can be done. And so therefore training should be a must, not some option. Um, if people feel like they want to get trained, they do. But more often than not, they just go pull a drone out of a box and go fly it around. Like that's one, that's a bit of a scary world we're living in there. Uh, understand that we are not the only ones using the air, airspace. It's a busy corridor up there. And there's lots of air traffic, lots of helicopters. Uh, there are ultralights up there. There are light aircraft. There could be gliders, et cetera, et cetera. Drone pilots must always watch out for multitasking. Uh, even as a drone pilot doing basic tasks, um, I can quickly find myself uh, task saturated. That's not me working in a, as a police de in a police department. That's not me being a surveyor too. That's not me being an engineer too, or, or a even a professional photographer. Just flying the aircraft is in certain areas is enough to task saturate me. Um, there's so much going on. Maintenance with the aircraft, firmware upgrades, uh, NAV Canada reports, uh, NOTAM weather issues um, is another thing we're always keeping our eye on. Um, the safety of people on the ground and people around you at large. Uh, safety of the drone, safe operation and condition of the drone on the ground and in flight. Batteries, huge issue. Uh, how old are they? How many times have they been charged? What's the life expectancy on them? Uh, radio links, all of these things are what we consider. That's just some of them. There's much more. And so just taking up a drone with a payload is enough to keep you busy enough. I believe that this is a, a human factor issue that we need to talk about more and it is a serious problem with the proliferation of drones. Um, China, for example, is a and DJI is a company that is so powerful, they can build many, many more drones than there are qualified people to fly them. And so that kind of a world, they're trying to lower the standards of training, lower the standards of expertise required so that they can sell more drones. This is the wrong way to go. This is really leading people up to disappointment. Um, you know, people that even do that, once they take a step in and see the complexities of, of what, what we're talking about here, um, they're going to be seriously disappointed and stuck with a drone that has a limited shelf life and all kinds of maintenance expenditures. So we need to talk about this more. We need to up the standards and uh, as we continue to work on these issues, understanding uh, that our number one rule in this business is safety first. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.